trolling foxes, and uh, it's the most efficient way. But I wouldn't swap borders for anything. No, I know that they're, they're hard to get hold of, and uh, I mean, I mean now, and uh, you can get borders, you can pick up borders, but they just don't gel. And if you, if you, you've just got to work at it. And once you've got them, you've got to keep hold of them. They fetched up the remark about people talking to these good Irish terriers years ago, Russells. They actually came off John Honor and broke Cartwright from down uh, Gloucestershire. They, got, they both died in the early 70s. They'd both been well up in their 80s when they died. They got them off Arthur Heinemann. Them was the proper Russells. They sent 10 or 12 to a couple of people in Ireland, and while they was in Ireland, a little bit of white English bull terrier was put into them. Then, a man called Eric Furness, who used to have a private pack of bloodhounds, he fetched about seven of them back from Ireland, and that's where Terry Duggan got his first dogs from. Then Jack Price got them off Terry Duggan, and Johnny Richardson fell off of that blood in the 60s and 70s. And they were good working dogs, because basically, they were the proper old Ilfacoon badger digging dogs, direct from uh, Ineman, but in Ireland they put a little bit of white English bull terrier into them. I came off Ben Hill one day with hounds, and I'd come in down with turdies and hounds walking down. There's a lady walking up with two Labradors and two kids, two little lasses. Well, she'd have lapped her arms around these kids and these dogs. And I said, I stopped on purpose. I said, what's, what's the matter, love? Oh, well, she said, your hounds. I said, don't bother them. You needn't worry, they're not bother them. And it was rather warm, and hounds just flopped down and laid down. And uh, she said, it's unbelievable. My neighbour said that they were a savage animal and they were... No, I said our kids dress them up and put them in browns. They dress pups up and old bitch done that. Mm -hmm. I said they play away and they let them out. And I stopped on purpose about a quarter of an hour and, you know, the kids came round. And she said, wait till I go home, my neighbour. She said, she said, what I wanted to do because she'd been stealing into it. Hounds were cruel and they were savage <coughs> dogs and they were, you know, I mean, they don't understand. They just don't understand. And one thing I learned was out there, and it's the thing that Mr. Bray and Frank Buckler is never put two terriers. If you don't know the place, don't put two terriers. And often on a hillside, if the fox is only just there, and it's a rocky place, be careful because them places are often the worst because that's why the fox is just made inside. I had a four deer rescue uh, in a big rock place just round the corner and uh, we just about given hope, up hope on the, the job till the last day and uh, we had a 15 foot shaft dug into the hillside and uh, we found the dog, the dog was still another 15 foot on and we, we never reached her in time so we had somebody hammer from the inside of the hole and we walked about on the top till we heard the, the sound of the hammering and uh, we measured 15 foot out from that position, took a GSEB and dug down and dropped straight on top of the tree and got her out alive. We hope you've enjoyed this tribute to a courageous and often unsung breed of dog and to the members of the Fell and Moreland Working Terrier Club who give so much. We would like to leave you with the objectives of the club. To rescue trapped terriers, to improve the breeds of working terriers by retaining old strains and to encourage the rural art of working terrier shows. <laughs>